Tonight I'm going to discuss the empire of lies. And there's an empire of money and finance. But this empire of money and finance has to exist within an empire of lies. Which, are, which is not a physical empire, but it's a mental empire. And it's an empire that that govern that is very uh, that's a very key component of, of, of the empire. Now um, so you are all privileged to be living in the midst of one of the greatest, if not greatest, re global revolutions in, in world history. And the last week that global revolution for which our society his name took a great leap forward. Now, I'm going to do a little tongue in cheek. Um, uh, you might not want to record it because it could be taken out of context. <laughs> You're going to do it for angry peasants of the world who otherwise would be blaming the Jews, the Vatican, the, the capitalists, the leftists, the communists, the Islamists, the aliens, and God. And we'll be fighting each other when we are all getting screwed by the same empire. So, what happened? Okay. Well, it all began with Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russia. He started by saying that it was all that it was well known the British that British intelligence has a license to kill. And this was in regard to the, the scripture <coughs> affair. Then after the uh, alleged chemical biz business in Syria, in, in, uh, in uh, Gouda, the Russian foreign ministry and the defense said, we have concrete evidence that the British ordered the staging of, of this fake chemical attack in which the President of the U.S. responded in, in, in the way that he did with, with uh, France and, 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 and Britain. And this is very significant because they've singled out the head of the, the empire. And said the British caused this fake incident that then was used as the basis for um, the attack, which almost got us into World War. Now, and then Xi Jinping of China followed it up by demanding that Elizabeth May. Uh, Theresa. Uh, excuse me, Theresa May. <laughs> that the that the alleged chemical attack be thoroughly investigated. Now the British are being are, are being accused of this, of setting this up, and then the Chinese are saying you got to investigate this and, and get to the bottom of it or else. So the British are up against the wall right now. This is very important. And, and uh, by the way, they have two boys who were there, who were actors in the thing, who are now testifying publicly. So this whole thing is falling apart. And it's having a tremendous blowback. Sorry, Paul. Huh? Two actors? Like two kids? Two young people who were there, who survived, who were okay, who were, who were explaining how they were asked to, to behave and so on and so forth. Okay, sorry. So, um... So anyhow, the whole thing, the whole thing is made of fake. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the uh, um, to the I find it. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta go to.
Can you put up the the transcript of Zakharova? You know, I can't find it. Just the top of it. I can't get on the internet with this. This stuff won't go on. So I need, I need to, I need to. Um, anyhow, I have to go without it. Is I'm it, the two, is it the two and a half hour presentation that was given? Is that correct? Yeah, I'm going to. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't, don't bother. Don't bother. That's fine. Um, yeah, just go into a phone. Okay. Oh no, I got it. I, I found. I figured out where it was. <laughs> All right. I figured out where it was. It's in the briefing, but I want to use the briefing. Here it is. Okay. I'm sorry. What's the title? The are from the dog table. Okay. Um, yeah, it's coming up now. Okay. So. So, so what happened on Thursday is that the foreign ministry of Russia did something that's going to have absolute powerful reverberations. Um, I believe after Lavrov spoke, um, Zakharova, the secretary, the press secretary for the foreign ministry, started off by saying this. This is a transcript of it. And now, I am asking everyone to fasten their belts. During a briefing on the OPCW report held for the international diplomatic community on April 13th, United Kingdom Ambassador to Russia, Laurie Bristol, said, the Russian state has a record in state-sponsored assassinations, including in the UK. Is it not the first? It is not the first Russophobic statement made by a UK official, or for that matter, not the first UK statement that is an offense to, to law, standards of decency, or any morals. But it's not the main point. Let's put aside morals and the law and talk about something different. Maybe the UK ambassador does not know his own country's history, role, and involvement in processes that took place in other countries over the past centuries. I don't think Mr. Bristol is to blame for the absence of law in the UK. He probably just doesn't know his country's history. I think now is the time to fill this cognitive vacuum to tell the world something about Britain's history and its international activities and their consequences. Let us talk about state contracts, assassinations, and Britain's reputation. And from there, there's 37 pages of detailed, documented, everything. The genocide in India, the genocide in Africa, 13 million slaves, um, 40, 50 million dead in Africa, India, the famines, the deliberate famines, um, Ireland. Ireland, and, you know, Kenya. You know, it just went on and on and on, and then and then more modern. You know, the killing of David Kelly and and most of day. It just went on detailing the whole thing, and it's the British running this. Now, okay, I I'll, I'll send everybody the transcript because it's hard to hear the her speaking Russian and and the uh, interpretation. So I'll send everybody a transcript for right. tonight. Okay. But the point I'm getting at is that uh, 
that this is a unique, incredibly unique moment. Because the, the British are going around with this moral, you know, righteousness about Syria and, and, and lies and everything else like that. And this is, this is known to people. And this is very powerful. And the, the point I'm trying to make here is that, is that the British have got to be taken down. And they have got to be attacked as the lead of the attack. Why is that? Because the British Crown's offshore banks hold 35 to 50 trillion dollars. And these are directly under the Queen herself. And these, this is what runs the war economy. One third of the wealth of the world is in these banks. Hi. Hi. Okay, that's okay. And this system, which has been growing, is at the core of what we're dealing with. And to go after the United States instead of the British is like. You start off, we'll turn off the ring. That's all that is important. Hi, what's up? It was, it was, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't. I'll call you later. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm in the middle of the meeting. Okay. I had to take that one. Okay, that was the boss. You're <laughs> talking about Don Bolton on the phone. Yeah, that was my boss. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Don Bolton. Okay. Uh, so, so now, our movement has been doing this for 40 years. Okay. Has been going after the British for 40 years. And everyone has said we were nuts, we were crazy, we were conspiracy theorists, whatever. But the point is that this is the core of the operation. And they're having to come out in their own name because they have an unreliable person as President of the United States. It's not reliable from their standpoint. Okay, so, so now. So if, the, if, the, if they're now starting to lay out the lies and the genocide and the history of genocide of the British, this is only the beginning. So, um, okay, so, because the empire is an empire of lies, it's very important to understand that. And the There are epistemological lies. That is philosophy. Okay, so that's one. Then there, then there's um, lies about the Bill of Rights. Lies about trying black men, Paul. Okay, yeah, sorry. Okay. Make more clear. Okay. Okay. Okay, then there's Lies about scientific discovery. Okay. Lies about history from the very beginning of man to present.
about economics. Or, or uh, politics. Um, lies about the ecology, which is also the science aspect. Um, so, and um, about everything else. Okay, so there's nothing that isn't a lot really. And why is this important? Why is why do they do this? Okay, well, now the point is, do they who create these lies know they are creating lies? The answer is yes. Do they know that they are creating lies? Yes. Do the people who accept the lies know that these are created lies? No. And that's the problem. They they get bought, they buy into it, but they don't realize that they are created lies. Now the difference between somebody who is criminal and somebody who is just unfortunately uh, like a lot of us have been told things that we accepted that were lies, uh, is that the person who's criminal knows it's a lie and goes along with it. That's, that's the difference. Okay, so you can't call somebody a criminal if they, if they believe something that's a lie because that's all they've been told or, or something like that. But, but you have to understand, the empire is, is based on lies. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you a little anecdote about LaRouche. When he was in junior high school, I believe, he was uh, introduced to the study of geometry in, I think, 7th or 8th grade, 8th grade or something like that, maybe ninth. And he was introduced to Euclidean geometry. <coughs> and he refused to accept it. He refused to accept Euclidean geometry. He says, this, is not, this does not make sense. This does not work. And he had a fight for a year with the teacher. His parents got involved, the school got involved, and he wouldn't back down. This is in, the, this is in junior high school. It was a huge scandal in the, high, in the junior high school and with his parents and with, and with the community because he refused to back down. He refused to accept uh, Euclidean geometry as truth. And he went after the professor, and the professor went after him, and this went on for a year. <laughs> Now, that, that's, but, and I'm saying this because this is, this is how deep it goes. This is how deep it goes. Okay. Now, what I mean, what I mean by epistemology is, I mean, epistemology is how do we know what we know. Okay. And the question is, how does the human mind know and how does the human mind make discoveries? And the British promote Aristotle and the modern Aristotles, uh, Sarpy, um, Hume, Locke. Oh, by the way, the Sakharova attacks Locke as being the uh, person who, 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 who invested all his money in slavery and uh, created a constitution, a slave uh, constitution for one of the southern states. And, uh, uh, and Locke is like life, liberty, and property. So this is, this is okay, and, and then you have, of course, Malthus is a continuation of this in a different way, Descartes. And so forth. And their whole idea is a rejection that human beings make discoveries or knowingly make discoveries or can, can make discoveries. Their whole idea is we are governed by our senses, period. So the British Empire is based upon the idea that if you can control the sense perception that people have, 
you can control them. So the empire is all about controlling through narratives, people's sense perception. People's perception of reality. Perception of reality is the basis of empire. Right? Perception of reality. That's how they do it. And how do you control perception of reality? You control communication, education, and so forth and so on. You know, it's not, and then later on you have Aldous Huxley, these people talking about the doors of perception and all this other stuff. How do you, how do you manipulate people's perceptions? How do you control people's perceptions? What is Hollywood? I mean, what is the media today in the U.S., in the Western, in the Western, it's a manipulation of perceptions. You know, two communist, com, uh, communist uh, KGB officers were talking to each other in the United States and they were saying, you know, I, I can't. You know, I can't get it. All the, all, the, all the news channels say the same thing. We can't even get that in the Soviet Union anymore. We can't do that in the Soviet Union. <laughs> How do they do it? How do they get it all to be the same, you know? And so, so it's a perception of reality. And everything that's developed is, is about that, okay? But the problem with all of this is you create a... Uh, well, the problem with it is, 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 is that it's an empire, and the empire is, co is not a able to sustain the means of existence of the population, and is instead trying to kill off most of the population. So therefore, it's going to run into problems. Now, about scientifics, scientific. The law of entropy. Why is why do they say the universe is running down? It will always run down, will never, will never develop. Because they want to convince people that the universe does not have a, a, a God or a creator or anything that's going to, that, that implies that the universe is an open-ended system of development. Because if you think that's the universe, then you're going to apply that conception in, 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 in human and, and human activity. So that's, if you question entropy, you are not, you are not allowed in the physics community. Period. If you go back to Kepler and demonstrate how Kepler made the discoveries of gravitation, you are not in the physics community anymore. That's how serious it is. That's a serious, that's a lot. This is a lot. This is not reality. This is a myth. Do the people who created the idea of entropy or promoting it know it's a lie? Yes, they do. Otherwise, they wouldn't promote it. If it were true, they wouldn't promote it. They'd promote something else. Now, okay. Lies about history. Lies about the beginning of, of human civilization. Lies about how the name. All these lies are designed to make it conform to the narrative that they want to make about the nature of human beings. The nature of human beings has to be reflected in the narrative. Their view of the nature of human beings has to be reflected in the narrative that they're presenting about the origins of civilization, the origins of human beings. Lies about economics. LaRouche's economics is very simple. <laughs> It's a physical system of reproduction. It has certain boundaries. It, it, it's very simple. You say that to an economist and they will go absolutely berserk on you because they believe that an economy is merely a matter of Robinson Crusoe and two Robinson Crusoes and three Robinson Crusoes and they all, and there's, a, there's some kind of additive thing. There's no sense of a physical process. You, if you go to an, uh, any economist, they will tell you that econ economics is not a science, it's an agreed upon, uh, it's, a, it's a, what do they call it, consensual agreement. Yeah. So, so now, lies about politics, left and right, you know, and all of that. All, it's all lies. The whole, the categories are lies. It's all lies. That's the whole point. And that's the, so, 
So we have this genuine event that occurred on Thursday, which is only the beginning of what I think the Russians are going to do. <laughs> it's only the beginning of what the Chinese are going to do. But they have begun, for the first time, a powerful state actor, two powerful state actors in this, in this respect, China and Russia, are now coming forward and saying, this is the history, the real history of mankind, of the, what the British have done. Okay, this is huge. This is the first step. It doesn't mean that our other people haven't said this before. It's not new. Not, nothing that Zakharov is saying is new. No, it's, be, it's the fact that the Russian government is saying it. That's what's important. And the Chinese government is backing them up. They, they've always known what the... What, yeah, okay. They've always known. They've always known. But the fact that they're saying it publicly and they're taking it to the British is very important. Why? Because if they don't do that, there's no way that, you, that it's possible for the United States to... There's no way for the United States to have a revolt against the British system internally in the United States if this is not made very clear. And I'm not saying it's going to be successful either, but this is what you have. This is the first step in what you have to do. So, so that's, um, so, um, so, um, And I'm willing to answer any questions you have about that. Now, how does lie work? Okay. When you make the discovery that it's not what you've been told, or it's not what has been accepted by those around you, you are now in a crisis because your mind says it doesn't make sense. This is what it must be otherwise. Or it can't be that. Then you're coming into a moral crisis. Because you're now up against your peers. You're up, up against the power that runs your society. Okay. And so in effect, you're forced to go socially underground to survive, in effect. Lies that are discovered and not socialized because of fear of social ostracism leads to the weakening of one's self-confidence in one's own mind. This is very crucial. Lies that are challenged in which one asserts and points out and demonstrates that something is untrue in the narrative that's being presented comes under attack. And that, again, that person can be crushed. Or there's an attempt to crush that person. And the British system operates on that way. And to give you an example of where the early training for the British system to operate on the basis of lies is among the elite who go <coughs> to these elite boarding schools, the, particularly the men, the boys. And they call it old school ties, where the older youth sexually molest the younger youth. And, it's, and if you speak out against it, in you are, you, are, you are breaking the code. And then when you get to be an older school kid, then you get to, uh, in boarding school kid, you get to do the same thing. Now this is the training ground for living in a world in which everything is a lie 
and the truth is never discussed except privately under the table. So you develop a, 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 a command <coughs> of a lie is you're supposed to lie, it's accepted. You're supposed to provide, you're supposed to conform to the narrative. And sometimes you conform to different narratives as you go up the social ladder. You go up the next ladder, then it's a different narrative. You go up the next ladder, it's a different narrative. But you always you always conform to the narrative. And then when someone comes along and exposes <coughs> this, well, first of all, how did you know? How could you have possibly known? Everything's been kept secret. How can you possibly know this? Then you're, then, then you're a problem. Because, you, because <coughs> you're challenging the edifice of the system. It's the same way in the Roman Empire. It was based upon lies. It was based upon the emperor is God. Everyone knows he wasn't God, but you have to say that. You know. You know, and the Christians wouldn't say it, so that that meant they were a problem. It wasn't that they weren't they were well behaved people. They were the most well behaved people in the Roman Empire. Well, what made them a problem? They wouldn't accept the lies that were being presented. <coughs> so um, so so now this is I'm hoping this is the beginning of the attack that has to occur on the lives that people have been living in. And I'm hoping that this opens up the door for us to develop um, <coughs> a confrontation with the narrative of that the British have controlled the world with on history, science, and so forth and so on. Now, And this is very important in economics because you have to be you have to lay the groundwork for implementing Glass Steagall and the credit policy and the four laws. But if you have everybody clinging to these lies as the basis of reality, even though they're false and they can see that they're false, but they but they're clinging to them, that that you have to break that control if you're going to get Glass Steagall and so forth in there. <coughs> so I'm not I'm not going to go through a lot, I'm just going to finish by saying that there's, there's two major developments which are now going on. One of them is the Korea development, uh, which is um, amazing. It's actually, they're actually going to meet soon, the, the president of Korea and, and Kim Jong-un, South Korean King. And they're, gonna, they're now in the process of working out an agreement to end, to end the uh, war. And, and all kinds of uh, things are coming, are coming together. And this is involving Russia, China, and Japan, and the U.S. So this is very important. And I'm sure <coughs> somebody is, uh, uh, they had Pompeo going there to meet with King Young. moon I hope uh, he learned something. Uh, and uh, so this is very significant. And the other thing is, is uh, there's another attack on Russia occurring, or another attack, not on Russia, but on uh, uh, an attempt to create a problem for, for uh, there's a color revolution like the one in Ukraine now underway in, 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 uh, Armenia. in uh, Armenia, yeah, and that's underway. So this is a, a wonderful change from a week ago when, the, when we almost, when we were sitting on our chairs wondering if we were going to be around this week and now there's a shift. So there's these shifts that are taking place, and we got to stay with it. And um, I'm very optimistic with the flank that the, that the Russians have opened up uh, in, in going after the British. It's very, very important to go after the British. And then this also plays into a potential change in, internally in Britain. Now, you might want to know that uh, Theresa May's husband is, um, major shareholder. is, a, is a major leader of uh, uh, the investment group, BAE. of the leading investment group in BAE, yeah. and a second leading investment group in Lockheed. So you're, Lockheed. you're dealing with, with the core of the military uh, industrial conflicts, which is the, the system of empire backing up the financial system, because it works that way, because the, 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 the threat of war and actual war creates the conditions where 
of instability on which the offshore system is based. The offshore system is a way to escape taxes. It's a way to promote the, um, the individual greed, anti-nation state um, you know, personality, the criminal mind, the anti, the sociopathic criminal mind of the richest popul of the population that they can, they can escape the laws of their country. Uh, and the need to promote the general welfare of their country. And, but that is backed up by, uh, by the instability around the world, which creates the conditions for, also for the, the flow of funds into the, uh, into, and, the, and the conduction of business offshore. So a large portion of maybe 50% of all business transactions are connected to offshore banking and, and finance. And that is governed by the British monarch. That is overseen by the British monarchy. So don't think that this, this is a this is a not an in, inconsequential uh, individual. Now, but when the belt as the Belt and Road comes in, you start to develop these areas. Then then that attacks the control because that creates an opportunity for people not to take their money out of the country, but to put it into the real economy of their nation. And also it allows the countries to start to develop the, the national banking mechanisms that they need to direct the development of their country. So, so the thing that these guys have always hated was Alexander Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin, Lincoln, FDR, Kennedy, and LaRouche. And now they're starting to hate, going to hate Xi Jinping and, uh, and Putin. And, and, and hopefully they'll, they'll you know, <coughs> they'll freak out more by their uncontrolled uh, person that they have in the, in, 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 in the White House. He's not really under their control. He, he has his own views. And for some reason, this guy has never really accepted the fact that he's an underling. <laughs> that he's one of the peasants. <laughs> or if he did, he's, he's not happy about it. <laughs> So, so, uh, so I'll stop there. It's kind of a short presentation. So, so go ahead.